Okay, so we're going to start uh, doing some texturing on this guy. First thing I want to do is I want to get a ground plane in there. Um, I went, as soon as I turn lighting on, uh, I really like to see, uh, I don't know, I like to see cast shadows. I'm a lighting guy. What can I say? And I also want to see the little light highlights reflecting in there. So I turn both on. Remember that specularity and reflection in the real world are linked. They are the same thing. They're both just reflection. Uh, but in our CG, we have unlinked them so that we have individual control over the brightness of the reflection of geometry and images, as opposed to uh, separate control over the uh, intensity of reflection of light sources. Okay, now that we have basic procedural textures on our rocket ship, we need to start refining and adding detail. Uh, and how we're going to start with that is we're going to start adding some decals to this guy. Some people call them decals, decals, whatever. So now what we have is a luminous ball that, that is not contributing to radiosity, but that is contributing, contributing nice high range reflections. And that's starting to feel really good. So the first thing we need to do is create some UV sets. And we'll begin with the body. So I'm going to collect, I'm going to, I'm going to select the uh, fuselage polygons. And I'm going to do a simple cylindrical unwrap on the Y axis. So create a new texture. I will call it body. I will set it to cylindrical. It's already on the Y axis. The subpatch interpolation, I want to be subpatch. Because the object is subpatch in its final incarnation, if I were to leave the map type or the subpatch interpolation as linear, then my textures would stretch uh, across the uh, across the polygon edges, and that's not what I want. So you want this to be linear if the polygons are linear, and you want it to be subpatch if your polygons are subpatch for sure. I'll click create, and there automatically is a very nice, well laid out UV set. Now this worked really well because the shape is very symmetrical. Where you have highly asymmetrical sh shapes like animal or human heads and so forth, um, you really need to use a more capable software like UV Layout. Deco. And uh, pop back in here and I'm going to actually go into the, my image editor and revert this image back to version 2 which doesn't have the text in it. Now I'm going to load the text deco. I spelled that wrong. It doesn't matter. Uh, separately, and I'm going to add a uh, math vector mult node. And I'm going to multiply this result by that image. Let's make a little space here. So once again, I need to add an image node, 2D texture, in this case, the image is going to be the hatch text decal. Once again, UV mapped on the body. And I'll plug that in there. So I've let that resolve for a few seconds, and I'm satisfied. That's a nice subtle detail of rivets around there. Uh, now, I could go on and work on this model forever like this. Um, however, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that there's a lot of work that doesn't need to be done. Um, if you've worked on a lot of shots, you know that you get to the end and you see the final shot and you realize that a whole ton of the work that you spent so much time working on isn't even visible in the shot anymore. So what I've learned to do is get a model to a certain level of acceptability and then go, okay, you know what, it's time to put this in the shot. And then when we when we actually see it in the, sh the actual shot, we'll know what we need to do and things that we don't need to do because you know we have a lot of fun doing the modeling and the texturing and things like that I could I could just sit here and noodle with this for absolutely forever and never ever get to the shot uh, but I do want to end up this series with the finished shot so I'm going to grab my camera I'm going to go outside I'm going to actually take some footage and we're going to track it then we're going to put this model in light it up a little bit and at that point we're going to know what we have that we need that we really need to address before we can complete the shot and it'll save us from doing a whole bunch of work that we will never need to do 
because ultimately doing this work has to be about finishing shots. Uh, and what you don't do to finish a shot is equally as important as what you do to finish a shot uh, because the artist who can finish a shot more quickly and with less steps and less effort is going to be a lot more cost effective than the artist who noodles on the details of rivets uh, when they're just a blur in shot and then takes twice as long or even longer to get the shot done. So let's go outside and get some footage. <laughs>